Good afternoon. So today we moved. Oh. <laughs> today we moved to a different part of the forest to um, personal identity for the next couple of weeks. The identity of the self. Uh, so the reading for today was Locke's ide of identity and diversity. If you looked at that, did, did, was it easy or difficult? Easy? So hard, yeah. It is hard. Um, uh, today I'll, um, I, I'll just try to highlight what I take to be Locke's main point. I hope that will make it easier if you have another look at it. It is hard. Um, but um, OK, on Thursday we'll look at an easier piece, uh, Bernard Williams's The Self and the Future. It's really a response to Locke, The Self and the Future. Um, so let's start out by looking at what I think is one of Locke's most famous examples, The Prince and the Cobbler. The whole, there has been an enormous amount written in the last 300 years since Locke about personal identity. And in analytic philosophy, it's all driven by just two examples. One of them uh, we'll look at next week, which is um, the example of fission. The other example, just these two examples driving thousands and thousands of pages in the last 300 years, is this example of the prince and the cobbler. Now, Locke's main point in, that, uh, in the reading is you are not human, or um, perhaps more precisely, you are not a human being. Can you put up your hand if you think that sounds fair enough? If you think that sounds like the wrong view? Does that sound like the wrong view? You are not human. Yes? That sounds like the wrong view. And uh, yeah, if you think, well, it might go one way or it might go the other. OK. OK. I actually think Locke is completely correct about this. Um, he's got this example, the example of the prince and the cobbler. And here it is. Uh, you are to imagine, imagine if you will, a humble cobbler, um, um, an industrious chap, worked hard all his life, difficult background, takes time off in the tavern, um, never has quite enough to eat, um, perhaps a wooden leg. Um, uh, and on the other hand, a prince living in a castle on the hill. And one morning, the cobbler wakes up with his memories of a drunken night in the tavern uh, the night before, um, wondering where his last is, wondering where his tools are, in a magnificent bed surrounded by servants. Locke says, should the soul of a prince carrying with it the consciousness of the prince's past life so down in the gutter, there is an irate figure rising up. He looks just like the old cobbler, but he is shouting for his servants and wanting his tea to be brought in. The soul of a prince carrying with it the consciousness of the prince's past life, should that enter and inform the body of a cobbler, that body being as soon deserted by the cobbler's own soul, which has meantime fled to the body of the prince. Everyone sees he would be the same person with the prince. That is, that figure in the gutter that's now getting up and looking for his servants and demanding his tea. That's the prince, right? It's the cobbler that's waking up in the bed on the hill. That could happen, yes? I don't say it happens often, <laughs> but um, if that happened, if you woke up in a different body um, with all your memories, all your awareness of your past life, that would still be you. That would still be the same person. You'd just have swapped bodies. Right? I mean, I take it this is not the first time you've heard this kind of idea. I mean, I, I, I was actually looking this up. There, are a ton of uh, novels, short stories, um, movies, um, uh, actually in the last, m mostly this century, um, 
uh, about the, using that idea in one form or another, the idea of a body swap. I was looking for the most recent example. The most recent example I could find was Yamada, the story of Yamada Kun and the Seven Witches. Um, this is um, the story. Uh, th th this on the right is the class delinquent, the school delinquent, as you can see from the blue hair. This is a very bad boy. And, uh, <laughs> this is. <laughs> this is um, um, this is the, the head girl, the brainiest girl in the school. And they discover they have the ability to swap bodies. Um, this came out last year. So this is not just um, abstract philosophical spe speculation. Um, you find this in real life, too, in manga <laughs> comics. Um, OK, so Locke's point is you can make sense of that. You can make sense of a body swap. Everyone sees that that figure waking up in the gutter would be the same person with the prince, right? If the prince, yep. Well, if they're saying that it's, it is the prince, then wouldn't it be more accurate to say like it is the, the thing that used to belong to the prince rather it than is it the, is like the new I mean, soul. The, the body in the gutter, right? If you're pointing to the body in the gutter, that's the prince. Is, is that what you're saying? No? <laughs> <laughs> the body that used to belong to the prince has now been inhabited by the cobbler. Yeah? Yep. So wouldn't everybody see that the cobbler's body is now inhabited by the prince? Wouldn't they see that as the cobbler? Because he looks the same as the cobbler, so like I'm pretty sure... They would see that as the cobbler until he began to speak. Well, then they would say you're lying. <laughs> they might say you're lying, but they could test him. After all, he knows everything there is to know about the prince's past life. Yeah, he was there. Yeah. Yes. It's not possible. Yeah, it's not possible. Did you ever did you read any scientific article about body swaps? Well, actually, um, uh, I think it's uh, I, I think it's early days, but um, uh, there are I, I have read scientific articles about head transplantations. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's um, uh, uh, and uh, <laughs> there was a monkey, no, no, uh, actually it's about 30 years ago, which had the head of another monkey uh, transplanted onto it um, to the extent that um, it could even bite the researchers. <laughs> um, it was functional. It didn't last very long, but it had a few days. Um, I think you'd be very hard put to say it's going to be scientifically impossible. We'll come on to this in a minute, actually, uh, the, 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 the thing about scientific possibility. But I don't know. I mean, I used to think that when someone first told me about FaceTime on an iPhone, I said, come on. <laughs> that can't really happen. No, I mean, if we, say, if we say we cut someone's arms and legs off, we say it's the same person. That's right. It's still the same person if you cut half the torso. Like, no, no, legs is still the same person. So we, I think that's we right. can reduce it to the character. Good. Well, that's, what, that's exactly what Locke is saying. I mean, if you, if you ampu, you could think of it, it as like this. You do a kind of limiting case of amputation on the cobbler. You amputate the entire body, leaving only the brain, yeah. right? And then you do a similar complete amputation on the um, prince. Uh, leaving only the brain. And now you think, boy, these guys need bodies, and you just swap around the bodies. There you go. That's what Locke is saying. But notice that, OK, so that's clear, right? The prince has woken up in the cobbler's body. The, uh, the cobbler has woken up in the prince's body. Um, but can, so the prince is now waking up in the gutter. Is that the same human being as we had? Human being is a biological term. Human beings are biological organisms. Um, it's perfectly clear that this is the, the thing in the gutter is the same human being, the same biological organism that was there last night. Yeah? The, hu the, the biological organism that was there in the prince's bed was there all through the night. So if body swaps are possible for you, if it even makes sense, then you are not the same thing as the human being. It could be the same human being, but a different person. Different person, same human being. Yep. Um, if you start off, like, 
like, let's just say, like, you are a human. Like, so, you start, <laughs> like, the prince starts off as a human in his body, and the cobbler starts off as a human in his body. Uh -huh. And then they switch bodies, and they're still humans. Like, they're just in different bodies. Right. But they're not the same humans. Mm -hmm. That's the point, yeah? yeah? So, sameness of the person is not the same thing as sameness of the human. I mean, human beings can't swap bodies. That makes no sense. You see what I mean? It's like saying, here I have two pieces of paper. Now just swap them around, <laughs> right? That makes no sense. You can't have one bit of paper and have it together. If you see what I mean, yeah. No, that um, th there's a notion of the same biological organism that would apply to an amoeba or a frog or a fox or, or, or I'm a flea, right? There's that notion of same, bi sorry? There's that notion of same biological organism. Um, and in that sense of same biological organism, it's been the same biological organism in the prince's bed all the way through the night. It's been the same biological organism in the um, gutter all the way through the night. Yeah, but nonetheless, the people have swapped over. So the people can't be the same thing as the human beings. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Well, you said originally, or in response yeah. to his point, you Oops. said that you have amputated out the brains and swapped them. Right, which right. Means they're not the same human. The biology yeah. did change really yeah. kind of a lot. Very good. OK, the, the <laughs> yeah. Well, a couple of things here. One is, I, I actually want to come on to brain transplants in just a minute. But one thing is, the way Locke puts it initially is certainly in terms of souls, right? Um, should the soul of a prince carrying with it consciousness of the prince's past life? So the picture, the way he puts it initially is, these souls are swapping over. Yeah? Um, and that is the natural idea. But the, the, what makes Locke's discussion um, not just interesting but great is the way that he immediately goes on to say, um, but sameness or difference of soul is not the key thing. Even suppose there are souls, that's not uh, important. Because if people can swap bodies, they could swap souls too. If I've got a bit of ectoplasm here carrying the mental life of the prince, and a bit of ectoplasm here carrying the mental life of the cobbler, these two could swap over. Um, so if you could have body swaps, you could have soul swaps. Yeah, Here's Locke. Um, I have met, I, as I once met with one who was persuaded his had been the soul of Socrates. How reasonably I will not dispute, for this I know that in the post he filled, which was no inconsiderable one, this is presumably the prime minister or the king or something like that, he passed for a very rational man, and the press has shown he wanted not parts or learning, but he said, yeah, my soul is the same one as Socrates. But Locke's point is, would anyone say that he, not being conscious of any of Socrates' actions or thoughts, could be the same person with Socrates? I mean, maybe you do have a soul. Maybe it's been reused hundreds, thousands of times in the course of human history. Maybe your soul was what I mean. So it might be good ecology. <laughs> it might be good ecology, right? I mean, you don't just throw away a soul when you're done with it. You know, you you wipe it out and give it to a new person, right? That could happen. So um, like reincarnation type stuff. Uh, well, yeah. Except reincarnation usually means it's the same person. Yeah. But Locke's point is, for it to be the same person, there would have to be some consciousness of that past life. If I'm going to say I was once an Egyptian prince, of course, I have no recollection of it at all. <laughs> but that makes no sense, right? Locke's saying the key thing is not which substance it is. Is it the same biological organism or the same soul? The important thing is if a mental life switches round. Yeah? And then we have to go on and look at what that means. Um, so that's a basic prince and cobbler setup. Yep. That's right. He has no awareness of Socrates' past life. Yep. That's what means he's not the same person. So, um, 
as came up already, uh, brain transplants are a very common idea um, in fiction. Um, uh, uh, there are, if you look in the web, there are about a million pictures of brain transplants. Um, uh, this is from one that took place on Mars, um, where, <laughs> where it's, um, as you can see, it's usual for the surgeons to strip to the waist. Um, <laughs> so suppose, <laughs> suppose your brain is taken from your body, right? I suppose that, um, I don't know, maybe it doesn't happen this way right now, but suppose that all the jack plugs connecting your brain to your body, suppose they are all pulled out uh, and the top of someone else's head is cut off, um, their brain carefully taken out and your brain put in there, right? That's the scenario, yeah? I mean, it, there are different ways to think about this. You could think, well, as, as the years go on, as um, life takes its toll on you, uh, a doctor might give you bad news like um, uh, your kidney is, it just won't take the kind of pounding it's been getting. Um, you need a transplant. But hey, that's great. We've got a donor. Right? That is good news. Yes? Yes? Um, if you're told your liver can't handle the kind of pounding you give it. Um, but that's okay. We've got, a we've got a donor. That is good news. Yeah? But suppose that one day, later in your undergraduate career, the doctor says to you, you've been doing too much philosophy. Your brain won't handle it anymore. Um, but that's OK. We've got a donor. <laughs> Is that good news? <laughs> Is, I mean, we, you would feel more than usual apprehension on being told that they'd found a donor there, right? Because the natural worry is that it's not that your life has been saved. Your body has been taken over by someone else who is using your body as a host. <laughs> right? That's the situation. Um, now, the thing is, the brain is just an organ of the body. Um, the, I mean, the kidney is an organ, the liver is an organ, the heart is an organ. The brain is just another organ. So when you transplant an organ, it's still the same human being. Yeah? So if you move, if you get a new kidney, it's the same human being. If you get a new brain, it's the same human being. But the natural concern is it wouldn't be the same person. Person and human being are different things. So if A's brain was put into B's body, right, the top of it are... Uh, uh, B's, B's head is opened, A's brain is popped in. Who's, who is the resulting person? Put your hands up. If, uh, 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 I hope I'm keeping track of A's and B's here. Um, so A's brain is put into B's body. Uh, is, and then, then the resulting person moves and talks. Is that person A or is it B? Can you put your hand up if you think it's A? And if you think it's B? OK, overwhelmingly A. Right? I mean, it's not overwhelming. Nobody said B, right? Did anyone say B? No. Nope. Okay, so it's got to be A. So the person is not the same thing as the human being. Right? That's the conclusion. Yes? I don't even think that it would be A, though. I don't think it would be either of them. Uh huh. Because isn't like, uh, I mean, that'd be like saying, okay, you take A's arm and you put it on B. Like, that's right. You take his arm, you put it on B. Who, yep. who is the new, who is the person now? Like, okay, but A or B. Um, I just feel like the brain, like it's still like a physical organ, like it's still a, like a material thing. And it is still a material thing, yeah. So like just by putting the brain of a different person into a new person doesn't make it the old person. Is, is that right? I mean, suppose you find, uh, suppose suppose a doctor said to you, well, so, <laughs> you're probably in a different case, but suppose the doctor said to you, forget all those exercises you've been doing, right? You don't need to do those tedious gym exercises anymore. No more bending and stretching. We can just pop you into a brand new body. I'd do that in a moment, <laughs> right? <laughs> I don't find that difficult at all. Um, if you're wondering who the resulting person is, right, suppose that, um, suppose that you're A's sibling, yep, and you, you're saying, is this really A? You can ask A anything you like about the good old days. But they don't yeah. have the brain But sorry? But don't they not have the, you mean? A's brain was put into B's okay, body, okay, okay, right? Okay, okay. 
So you, you're asking the, this, you're saying to this thing, <laughs> um, um, do you remember the good old days when you and I played games by the fireside with year old spot? Yeah? And, it, and the, this thing says, yes, of course, and don't you remember? That was when Nanny fell off the tree. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right? You see what I mean? Um, you're getting all the, the right answers. You're going to say that's not your, that's not your brother? Anyway, Locke would be saying, yeah. Um, I feel like there's a distinction now between like the human, the human being, and the soul slash like personality. Uh, don't don't do that soul slash personality. Um, there, uh, there's no slash here. There's a soul is one thing, and the personality is another. You see what I mean? Well, the difference is that persons can swap um, bodies, whereas it makes no sense to say, I've got uh, the same human being but a different body. The human being and the body, that's the same thing. So what's the difference? The human bo the human being is the body? Yes. But then if you transplant a different organ, like you got a heart transplant? Right. It's still the same human being. Is it? If you got an organ transplant, yes, of course. Yeah, you've got somebody else's heart. Look, if you take a dog, right, suppose you're told poor old Rover's just about had it, right? Um, the, the heart's going, and they say, but we've got this fantastically expensive operation. Yeah, you can get, you can, if you want to, you can give Rover a heart transplant. Um, well, and you do it. Then if some philosopher comes up and tells you that's not Rover, <laughs> it's got a different heart. How could that be Rover? Um, that, that, that's not right. That is Rover. It's just Rover with a new heart. It's the same dog, but not the same like dog being. Dog being. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> dog being. I see. It's the same human, but not the same human being. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. These are subtle distinctions. Um, what, what you'd care about with Rover is: is it the same dog? Or did, or did they just scour the streets and get me one that looked like Rover? Yeah. But if, but if they actually popped a heart into Rover's body, that's the same dog. And in that sense of same dog, same biological organism. In this kind of case, when you've got a brain transplant, it's the same biological organism. Yeah. I agreed with a different organ, but it's the same biological organism. No, no, I'm saying it's still the same person if it's a different organ besides the brain. Right. And the same human being if it's any organ at all. So if you're saying that if you switch the brain, it's the same human being but a different person? That's exactly right. If you switch the brains, it's the same human being but a different person. If that brain gets popped into a different body, then that's the same person, that's the same human being lying there, but it'll be a different body, a different person. Sorry, I didn't do that very well. It, sorry? What defines the human being? Is it their facial structure? Is it their bones? Like a heart? Um, yeah, Locke has this notion of it's the same continued life. If you think what makes a tree at one time the same thing as a tree at a later time is not that it's the same cells, because the cells of the tree are constantly dying and being replenished. Yeah? Um, but look at this notion of the same continued life. Um, and similarly, with a colt growing to a horse, that um, the cells are constantly changing. But it, there is a single organized continuing life here. Um, and that's what makes it the same biological organism. And the same thing is true of people. I mean, is that right that all the cells in your nose are replaced once every seven years? So, something like that. Um, when I was in high school, people always said that. Um, but, sorry? Is that right? It's just not Even faster? OK. It's not true? No. OK, well. <laughs> the internet said it, and then like, the internet also said it wasn't true. So I don't <laughs> it's so hard to know what to think with yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. Well, I, I'm trying to articulate what common sense well, says. Common sense yeah. Is we have a person that's the same person that's the same body, so it's just, it's just the same thing. I, mean, I didn't 
mean, I I mean, they were it's ju- just a theoretical thing right now. Yeah. Swapping like it's just w- of course we know what a human being is because we see it every day. Yes, that's right. We do see human beings, and we know what people are. Yeah. Right. And we know that they're if different. You talk heart, nobody would say it's a different human being. If what? Sorry. If if you talk to the heart. That's right, nobody would say it's a different human being. Yeah, I, I agree, yeah. Um, uh, if, if you remove someone's brain into another person's body, it's still like, I, I think I agree with the person with the phone who said it's neither of the people, because yes. even if it's the first person's brain, like all the sense detectors, like um, sense of touch, sense of sight. Yes, all the sense detectors. All, are all of those are still of the person That's right. Yeah. Those sense detectors like kind of define experience, right? Because they're they're like what give you the experience. Like, it's because of your sense detectors. Yeah. Eyes that have twenty twenty vision versus yes. eyes that are really bad, and like a nose is really powerful versus a nose that's not so strong. Very good. Yes. Yes. Um, and like also like all the parts of the like hormone releases are not in the brain. Like um, they're just part of the endocrine system throughout the body. Yes. So, like, Well, the experiences would be different, I agree. If you've got a different kind of nose and so on, then the experiences are going to be different. You're going to say, I smell much better than I used to, <laughs> well, if you see what I mean. <laughs> or <laughs> or um, uh, I, 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 I don't smell as good as I used to or whatever. But the thing is, how should I put this? The river of the stream of consciousness into which all these things are being fed is the same old one. What I mean is, um, if I smell a rose right now, yeah, then I will be saying, in, in the new body, then I will be saying, ah, uh, that reminds me of that day so long ago in Florence. Um, yeah, I, I will be integrating that experience with experiences that were had by the person in the old body. Yeah. So the significance of all those experiences that you're having are going to be being interpreted in terms of the old mental life. Yeah, Locke is saying, yeah, that's very good. Actually, there's another question, but I, I want to suggest a way of getting at what you just, just that's very good. It's not the brain, really, it's the memories that's the important thing. That's your point? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's very important, and I'll, I'll yeah, come back to that. Um, yeah. I'm just going to add on to that. OK, well, l- let me say one more thing, and then. Uh, I, I agree with what you're saying. That's like <laughs> OK, OK. Um, so I say, and Locke says, um, the resulting per- person in the brain transplant case is a good memory experience of A's past life, but not a B's, and the resulting person is A. Right? Identity goes with memory. Um, suppose you try this. Suppose that in a few years, um, uh, and this is trying to bring out that thing about memory in the brain. Suppose that in a few years, what happens when they're doing um, brain surgery is uh, they make a backup of what's on your brain. Right, if you've got a tumor in your brain and they're trying to remove the tumor, then something might go wrong. I mean, the disc might crash, as it were. So um, the t- people take the precaution of backing up all your brain onto a computer disc. And suppose that uh, while they were removing the tumor from your brain, there was indeed an accident, and all the information on your brain is deleted. And they say, but that's OK. We backed up. And then they restore your brain with all that stored information. That would be fine, right? That would still be you. Your family would still say, it's dear old Bill or it's dear old Sally. Yeah, they wouldn't reject you because this had happened. It would still be the same person. Yeah? If something had gone wrong during the thing and then you'd been backed up from the computer file. Well, now suppose, yep. Ah, <laughs> right. Yeah, no, that's wrong. I mean, if you just apply it to the case of a computer today, I mean, the, the most applicable like, example is backing up a hard drive today. That's right, backing up a hard drive, exactly. Backing up a hard drive today, and you put it on a separate hard drive, it is not the same hard drive. 
Very good. It's not the and same hard drive. That's Mark, right. I'm also, I'll point out that when you're actually making like on the disk drive, you're making marks to the soil as you mentioned. They're not all done the same way. So that's it right. Can't, it can't be the same from a physical fundamental level or from a, a, a broader. That, I, I, everything you say that I completely agree with. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, 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 that's that's like saying it's um. Uh, it's not the same human being. Um, Locke's picture is the files in the cobbler's uh, disk, as it were, are moved to the prince. The files um, in the prince's brain are moved to the cobbler. Yeah? Your point is it's not the same hard drive. That's like saying it's not the same files. human. Sorry? You can't move the files to be exactly the same. As well, the, 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 the picture here is. You, we do, oh, I, I, maybe, it's, maybe this is out of date, but I all the time talk about moving files from one folder to another, moving files from one disk to another, right? Not copying, moving that particular file, yeah? So it's not that you, I'm some kind of dualist about files and I think they're made of ectoplasm or something, yeah? It's just that this is a very abstract kind of way to describe. It's something that's purely physical. But it's, it's, there's something kind of abstract about it. It's a configuration, uh, something like that. And that's what you can move from place to place. Um, and Locke is saying person is like that. It's an abstract notion like that. Yeah. So the physical realization is in a human being or in a hard disk. But the identity of the hard disk is different to the identity of the file or the person. One, two. Does this? Like, yeah. That makes a person, it's only memory that makes a person. Yeah. Is someone with Alzheimer's or dementia not the same person? That's exactly what Locke is saying. Someone with Alzheimer's or dementia is no longer the same person. Yeah. And that is a very harsh result. I agree. I mean, oh. once you find out the situation with someone, you, people do not say that thing there's not Granny. You know, that, that's, that's not what people say. Uh, that's not what the law says. They say it's still the same person. But I guess Locke's answer would be something like, it's the same human being, and um, they get respect and dignity in their treatment by courtesy of having once been that person. Yeah. Um, but I, 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 you're right. It's a, it's a really difficult point, that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Right. Uh, yep. Um, you have to limit it just to people with Alzheimer's. Like you forget things all the time. So if you forget yes. a memory, does that mean you're no longer? The same Very good. <laughs> uh, if you completely lost memories of your earlier self, yeah, of a twenty-year-old self, say, then so far as I can see, the view is implying that, yeah. Well, well, just, just like one, one memory. Like, what if I forget one day of my past? Yes. Still just one place, day of your past. Like, yeah, it shouldn't do, but in Locke's picture, it seems to. Um, I'll come on to. I, 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 will, I will try to deal with that kind of point in, in more detail in a moment. But you'll see in a moment. I'll put some quotes up from Locke. He seems to be saying exactly what you're afraid of. It, yeah, that um, if you lose memory of a particular day, then you are not the person that was there. Yeah. Um, but I think there are ways of of addressing that within Locke's spirit. Yeah. Uh, was, it, was there someone who hadn't asked a question? Okay. Last one. Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess we didn't get to it. The fact that, um, like, who you are isn't necessarily all of your collective memory, but it's part of, like, your collective person, personality, right? Like, it's not, yeah. like well, you don't remember what happened, like, two years ago on this date, but, like, it didn't affect everything since then. That's right. That traumatic day two years ago that you can't recall now, but... Everything about you, personality-wise, is different since then. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's like in, it's inherently changed. You're inherently changing over time. Yeah. That, that too. That's like the Alzheimer's. That is an, another important case. Yeah. But um, it, it is also a problem for this kind of picture. I said last one, but okay. Let's be. Yeah. So it's possible to just change a person without changing their brain. It's possible to change a person. Yeah, well. Yeah, th th that was my next slide, actually. Suppose that um, what's happening is that your information has been stored in the hard drive, and they're doing the operation. And then um, 
B, then there's a terrible mistake. All your information gets backed up onto B, gets restored onto B's brain, still in B's body. Then, um, well, I mean, what do you think? The resulting person presumably would be you. Yeah, you just die, let's suppose. I mean, your, your body, your, your brain is lost. And then they say, oh, here's B. <laughs> we don't care about B. Let's just write over. Um, yeah, you just overwrite your, your, your data onto B's brain. Who's woken up? You or B? You, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, one, two. Yes. Little things about you change, or like big things about you change, and like um, uh, when somebody mentioned the whole thing about Alzheimer's, like like that makes sense to me that you don't, uh, excuse me, you don't relate to that person in the same way, like yeah, you don't, yeah, that's right. Grandmother like has Alzheimer's or whatever, like you cannot connect with them the same way, so they seem mm -hmm. like a different person to you. Um, but I feel like. Not for the first time you guys are anticipating everything I want to say. I will show you a picture of a car accident in a minute. <laughs> um, but um, I, 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 w w w I think something of what you're saying there is a good way of bringing out why memory is a natural thing to fasten onto here. Because people's personality does change radically, right? Someone meets you and says, boy, I remember you when I first met you 30 years ago. Um, I mean, imagine this happening in the future. And, you know, you're saying, well, um, yeah, you, you know, you used to be so mellow and um, generous, and now you're a bitter, twisted, resentful individual, obsessed with thoughts of revenge. Um, <laughs> nothing autobiographical in this, I assure you. <laughs> um, so you, 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 you're right that everything about a person's personality can change. And in that kind of case, you, you, you'd say lightly, oh, this, uh, he's just a completely different person. Yeah? Just a, just a complete, but you don't really mean that. It's still him, right? Um, whereas if the memory goes, the actual memories of the past life, if that's all been wiped clean, then you're much more likely to say, but that's not even him anymore. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry, you, you, you were first, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, what your future opinions, well, they, they won't come from memory, presumably. I mean, or at any rate, they won't be the same thing as your memories. Yeah. Or, or, like, um, or is it saying that like, everything is changed? Yeah. At the moment, I'm just using this in a very generic way. Yeah. But um, I think when Locke certainly is trying to make, when we're trying to make precise what Locke is after, it means memories relating to particular episodes in your past life. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Consciousness is generated from more than memory. Sure it is, yeah. Right, so As someone was saying, there's perception, so for example. Well, we move, um, well, we switch brains, obviously, to kind of say the consciousness of A is still there because A's brain is still there. But when we put A's memory into B, B is still that person. Like, B is still B, like, with the same type of, con like, with the same personality of B, just with A's memory. Uh, th that is a possible view, yeah. Th that would say the prince and the cobbler didn't swap bodies. Um, the prince just got all the cobbler's memories. Yeah. Right, so is it, are we, are we, are we assuming that consciousness is also changing and the memory is changing? I, I, I'm not being very precise uh, at the moment in the way I'm using either consciousness or memory. I, I, I will try and make that more specific in a second. but. The way Locke is using consciousness, it seems to mean memory of particular past, li past events. But we'll, we'll come on to that in a second. Yeah. I was just trying to, so I think we're getting at the distinction between just memories and mental life. 
Yes, me yeah, memory, that's right. Th there's a mental life as a whole, yeah. which will include things like personality, um, mood, um, current perception, and then there's specifically memory. Mm -hmm. And Locke is really, when Locke's saying consciousness in this context, he really seems to mean memory of the, reaching to the past life from the inside, remembering what it was like in there back then. Yeah. Okay, this is really the last one. Yeah. Yes. Your brain grows, um, and so uh, the you form memories between, like, by synapses or something uh -huh, between, yeah. like, brain cells. I don't know exactly how it works, but when you're an infant and your brain is growing, those synapses keep getting broken, which is why right. they can't remember. Very good. Yeah. Very early yeah. On. So, are you a different person when you're three months old than you are? <coughs> on this view, when you're a young infant and not laying down memories at all, you are not a person. You are a human being, um, but you're not a person at all. And um, there's some basis for that. You know, you don't have rights, for example, uh, or at any rate, you have a limited amount of rights, but we don't let infants decide for themselves what they do. We say, we know better. You know, we literally, we literally are paternalistic about them. You see what I mean? Yeah. We say, we'll tell you what's best for you. That is what you do to infants. Well, I mean, yeah, they like, have no physical <laughs> Right, and they have no idea what's best for them anyway. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was just gonna say really quickly that actually when you're a baby, you have more connections naturally than you do at any point in your life. And you actually yeah. prune those connections in order to figure out what things are more important than others. So yeah. you could really argue that they're, I don't know, more of a human just in a different way. Like, I don't know how, what, like, what, and how it applies to this. Yeah, we, we need to get more specific about what we mean here. But you, you guys are, uh, are, I mean, this is a very valuable set of discussions because you are anticipating a lot of um, uh, uh, big points here. But okay, l l let's just go back to uh, th this case. If the brain is, ba if, the, if the information from your brain is restored onto someone else's brain, then you have survived, right? That's Locke's claim. Does that make sense? Um, if you have the memory experience, if the, if the person that makes it through the operation has all the memories of your past life, then that's you, not the other guy. That's plain enough at this point? Yeah. So you see why Locke is saying you are not a human being. You are not the same thing as the human being. Yeah. Can you put your hand up? That's a pretty persuasive case that you are not the same thing as the human being. Yes? No? Aha. <laughs> Locke did pretty well on that one. Okay, so the general point is sameness of person doesn't depend on sameness of body or sameness of brain. It only depends on consciousness of the past person. So if you think of what does it take for a later person to be the same one as an earlier person, all it takes is for memories to link the later person to the earlier person. If you've got memories linking the later person to the earlier person, then that constitutes sameness of person. You don't need a physical body or a soul linking the two of them. You just need the memories, and then you've got the same person. That's the idea. Here's Locke again. Since consciousness always accompanies thinking, and is that which makes everyone to be what he calls self, and thereby distinguishes himself from all other thinking beings, in this alone consists personal identity, uh, i.e. the sameness of a rational being. As far as this consciousness can be extended backwards to any past action or thought, so far reaches the identity of that person. It is the same self uh, now it was then. And it is by the same self with this present one that now reflects on it that that action was done. So if an action was done in the past, then you are the same person as the person who did that action if your consciousness reaches back to that action, if you remember that from the inside. That's the view. You've got to be able to reach back and remember it from the inside. Uh, to be the same person. And if you can do that, then it is the same person. Yep. Isn't it though, if you were to put like A and B's bodies, aren't how people interact with you, how they see you in the world, also, like maybe you have this question, if you really are a beast, 
Yeah. How people interact with you may, will be presumably very different after that kind of operation, right? You'll be famous, <laughs> presumably. Someone told you that you're not yeah. that person every day. Do you think that will change? You may you start to believe that you're not that person. You might start to believe that you're not that person, but, um, but you would be, yeah. Um, Even if you're not conscious that you're that person, you would be? Well, you'd be conscious of being that person in the sense that you had all your memories. Yeah. And you might say something like, um, I'm not Bill, yeah? But so long as your memory reached back to everything that Bill had seen and done, then you'd actually be Bill. Yeah. Um, let him once find himself conscious of any of the actions of Nestor. He then finds himself the same person with Nestor. Nestor being a classical hero. I think. Nestor? <laughs> I used to know who Nestor was. Yes? Um, but assuming you die and all your uh, memories have been saved and then transported to somebody else, is, is a different uh, being or like self that is now living your life that you have? It's a different body, that's right. Well, that's one view, but that's not what Locke says. Consciousness here, remember, means um, uh, what can be extended backwards to any past action. But if, okay, let's assume there's um, afterlife. Um, if you die and then you like, live again, would you still be that person? Or would you be somebody Yes, that's right. You, you wouldn't scooped out because if your soul didn't have the memories to start with, then it wasn't you. If there weren't those memories, it wouldn't be you. The identity goes with the memories, not with any soul or with any biological organism. Yeah? So the, uh, the necessary and the su sufficient condition for one person to be that person is the memory of the past experience. That's right. Uh, but, the but me memory of the past experience is yeah, necessary and sufficient. Really weird. Uh, for example, if we switch uh, Nancy's mind with Yao Ming, and you give this uh, now, uh, Messi's mind is in, in Yao Ming's body. Messi's mind is in Yao Ming's body, yes, yeah, you right. You give him a soccer ball, and you say, you remember you are the best player of that year? And he said, yeah, of course I remember. And can you right. show us something? And he, he starts to action, but he realizes, oh, oh, damn, this is not my body. And it's something, I don't yes. want to play this for anymore. That's right. That's very good. Yeah. But doesn't, but, uh, you know, I, you don't realize this, but I have to tell you, life's like that, right? Um, you find that your knees are just not what they were. Um, you, fi you find that you still think, yeah, I'm the best soccer player. Um, but no, the old knees just can't do it anymore. That's not, that doesn't mean you're a different person. He remembers how to say which angle he's, he yeah. used his foot to kick that ball yeah. and the strength. And all, all, the remember, all the stuff that you think is sufficient for him to be that person, but obviously it's not him. But he's got all the memories. He knows how to play it. He can tell you, oh, I remember from this angle, you yes. need to yes. and I'm going to go. But now, it doesn't work. Yeah, look, at the broadest level, I, I agree with you that um, philosophers tend to be cerebral types, right? So they naturally tend to emphasize very much how important the brainy part of you is to who you are. Yeah. Whereas if you think about someone who's a great football player or a great um, pianist or something like that, you know, someone for, for whom these physical things are really key, and then you're told, well, you could have a brain transplant, you could be put into a new body, not to worry, um, then it's, it's not going to seem at all reassuring. Um, but the thing is, I mean, uh, 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 that these physical kinds of physical changes can happen to um, a pianist or a football player anyhow. You see what I mean? You get the arthritis, your, your fingers just won't do it. Yeah, it's still the same person. <laughs> so, you, I mean, it, if you made a lot of money playing a whole bunch of uh, uh, stuff earlier in life, you don't get that money taken away from you when you can't play anymore because you say, oh, well, it's not the same person. Uh, you see what I mean? Isn't that right? <laughs> On the broadest level, I agree with you about the emphasis. Yeah, I'm, I'm, but th I think that would be Locke's first pass r response. Um. <laughs> okay, there's such a stack of questions. 
<laughs> okay, we may have to spread this over two sessions because I, I, I really don't. I, I find this very valuable, and I don't want to cut it off. Um, um, I tell you what, let me get to the end of this section. Let me just read out some lock to you, and then we'll pause for questions. Okay. Um, okay. So, let it, actually, yeah. Had I the same consciousness that I saw the ark and Noah's flood, as that I saw an overflowing of the Thames last winter? or as that I write now, I could no more doubt that I who write this now, that saw the Thames overflowed last winter, and that viewed the flood at the general deluge, um, the flood the Noah's Ark presumably having happened a very long time ago, like thousands of years or something. Um, that was the same self place, um, place, that was the same self, place that self in what substance you please. And by substance here, he means like, some concrete thing, like a biological body, or like um, a soul, or a brain, or anything else. It doesn't matter what the biological body, or the soul, or the brain was. So long as the consciousness is reaching back to that past time, then it's the same self as the self that was there at the past time. It's the same person as the person was there at the past time. That's what it takes. And sameness of the concrete thing is not important. As far as this consciousness can be extended backward to any past action or thought, so far reaches the identity of that person. That's where you, that, that you can track the identity of yourself by what you can extend co your consciousness back to in memory. You can do that. It is the same self now that it was then. It being the same consciousness that makes a man be himself to himself, personal identity, the identity of the person depends only on sameness of consciousness. That is, reaching back in time to, the, to what was seen and done earlier. Whether it be annexed to only one individual substance, whether it be annexed to only one body or one bit of ectoplasm or one brain or whatever, or can be continued in a succession of several substances. So the identity of the person comes free is a different thing to the identity of any one um, individual. Uh, OK. Um, right. Uh, OK, just, just a minute. Put up your hand if you've got a question. Uh, you haven't asked a question yet. One, two, three. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, what about like short-term memory? Oh, actually, you're not, you're not talking about memory. Okay. I'm going to talk about memory. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. OK, OK, I'm going to talk about memory much more. Yeah. So according to law, we'll come back. Uh, if you have two identical persons, sorry, uh, if you have two identical persons, according to law, how do you say that? Like, no. A and A and put it on the same key or whatever brain. Would they be the same? Uh, say that again. I don't. Like, I don't understand. The information from A that you backed up and just put it on two different people. Would they be yes. the same? Uh, that is a real puzzle for Locke. It's one that he didn't think of, yeah. Um, and uh, that is actually the second, I said fission was our second great puzzle case about personal identity. That is the second great puzzle case that we'll come to next week, yeah. So sorry to put you off, but I really don't want to try to give a sound bite on that. But yeah, that is a real hard question, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Going back to the example with the soccer and like if the, your physical abilities change, like are you still a yes. different person sort of thing? Initially I was like, yeah, you're totally a different person. But um, like I have a teammate who he was a rower, a really good rower. Yes. And then he got in a really terrible um, uh, bike accident and now he's a quadriplegic. And so oh, initially yeah. I was like, yeah, like when that happened to him, like he's a totally changed person. like and. And he wasn't the same, but I think upon further reflection, he's the same person, but that person was just different. That's right. And I think that's a really hard distinction to make when we're talking about all of this. But I think that this is totally true, and that yeah. you can still be the same person even if you go, even if you are different. Yeah. I, 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 I mean, the, the, these are really terrible cases that, that, that you're describing. Um, but a simple way to check, to get a reality check 
on, 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 on the distinction is to think about, um, suppose this person owed you money before. Do they owe you money afterwards? If you owed them money before, do you owe them money afterwards? Um, if they owned property before, does that person still own it afterwards? Um, if they had pension rights before, if they had a family, you know, if you, if you just think about the grounding and these kind of simple commonplace things, um, like if they were an American citizen before, is this an American citizen now? Do you see what I mean? If you think of this just as grounded in these kind of basic things um, about um, contracts and responsibilities and so on, then um, uh, it really gives you a reality check. Uh, and I think in your case, that, that is a terrible accident you're describing, but it's clearly the same person once you think of it in that framework of rights and responsibilities. Yeah. Um, OK. Um, OK, memory. So uh, just to talk a little bit about um, what's meant by memory here. Um, what kind of memory are we talking about? So the basic point Locke's making, it seems to me, is it's, I hope this is, uh, if this slide isn't abundantly clear, then do pause me right now. I know we've had a lot of questions, but for everyone in the room, this slide should make perfect sense. Um, so uh, uh, the general point here is that transfer of memories between the body of the prince and the body of the cobbler means the people have swapped bodies. And it's not a point about souls, because if you, even if you had souls here, transfer of memories between the soul of the prince and the soul of the cobbler would mean that the people had swapped souls. Yeah? Identity doesn't go with body or soul. It goes with memory. Yep? Can I disagree? Uh, you, can, uh, you can certainly disagree, yeah. Um, but the, the important question is, is it clear what it's saying? Yeah. OK, right. I would say, I personally would think memories are souls. Memories what? Are souls. So are memories souls? Memories create souls. Memories so create souls. I, I think there's no distinction between them. Like, they're both basically the same. Uh -huh. I bring all the memories, and the important thing is also the, like, sub, yeah, the subconscious memories. This is the important one. I think every... Uh, I'm going to come on to exactly what kind of memories we're talking about in a second. Yeah. So uh, are, are you talking about, like, the memory of the nice dinner two years ago? Yes, exactly. Absolutely. So we're not talking about experience that, like, in, like imprints my brain. Uh, that experience, uh, the, that nice dinner two years ago did imprint your brain. I don't really, there, there isn't really a contrast there. Something, something changed my personality through me remembering it. Yeah. Yes, the, 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 that's like that example of that traumatic day two years ago that uh, you can't now remember at all, but left you a broken man, let's suppose, <laughs> right? Um, the, yeah, yeah, so the, que the, the question earlier was, might, might not that kind of connection be important for memory, t for identity too? Yeah, um, yeah. So what if you have something that happens and you can't remember any of it, right? Say, yes. Uh, on the face of it, it does. If, if, if I get to it, there's a section I'm coming up to called problems and fixes, where that, that is actually one of the problems I want to raise, and I'll suggest a fix. Um, Sorry, I don't understand. Are you do? <laughs> OK. <laughs> OK, what do you, can, can you talk me through it? What don't you understand? Um, yeah. So is the distinction here like where memories are stored or where they, like, I don't really where memories are stored. The same thing is happening, so I don't really get what the point is, whether it's like a body swap or a soul swap. Yeah? Um, like just kind of getting on to like the memories of souls, and I think a uh, distinction you're asking about, what about aspects of the mental life that aren't imprinted in memories? Like if I think plants are really funny, yeah. where does that go? Oh, <laughs> right. That doesn't go here, I think, in, in the way I'm... <laughs> In the way I'm reading Locke, like if you, <laughs> it's never occurred to me that someone might think that plants are really funny, R right? Um, but I, I, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, you could think some plants are kind of pompous or something like that. It's, it's <laughs> okay, um, and then you lose that, right? Is, is that right? Th then that gets lost. It's not, it's not a memory, but it's part of the mental life. 
I agree. That, right. That is a key question, uh, wh wh what we're talking so about here. It would, if the prince used to think plants were funny and then his memories were put into the cobbler, the cobbler isn't going to be laughing about plants anymore. That's right. And so that's not the <laughs> that, that doesn't matter for identity. And okay. the argument there would be like the argument about the, uh, the football player or whatever, that, you know, after all, you, 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 people's senses of humor and so on does, do change mm -hmm. as they get older, that they, or, or as, they, uh, yeah, as, <laughs> as life takes its bitter toll on you. Yeah, yeah that, um, uh, th that kind of thing just happens anyway. Yeah. You used to just love sushi and now you can't bear it. You, you know, that happens. P people do change like that the whole time. But it's still the same person. Whereas the loss of the consciousness of the past event seems much more fundamental. What was going on in Alzheimer's seems much more threatening to the identity of the person. Yeah, th th that's the idea, at any rate. Yeah. Um, I, I don't want those to go away, but I'd like to move on just a little bit. Uh, I hope, I still hope to get through our problems and fixes before the end. Give me just a second. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Yes, even though your personality might change, if your memories of particular past events are still the same. Uh, then that's the same person. That's what it takes. That's the idea, right? I mean, it's certainly open to question. I'm just trying to hammer away at what the basic idea is and why it seems um, not unreasonable. So uh, as you guys have emphasized, there's a question, what kind of memory matters for identity, right? Um, because after all, practically anything that happens um, and leaves its impact on you can be called a memory, right? Um, the burnt child fearing the fire and so on, right? Anything that happens might make some difference to you and you'd be said to remember it. Um, so people make, it's not obvious what the right distinctions are to draw here, but one kind of uh, notion of memory is procedural or habit memory. Like you learn how to make a pot of tea or you learn how to play the piano, yeah? Uh, and um, that, uh, that is really seems like stuff you could lose but still be the same person, yeah? That's the idea, anyhow. Then there's the kind of memory that you can get from a book. If I just read a big book about Napoleon, then um, I know, I might know every little detail of Napoleon's life <coughs> if I read a lot about him. If I'm Napoleon's biographer, I might spend my entire adult life reading about Napoleon and knowing facts about Napoleon's past life. But that doesn't make me identical <laughs> to Napoleon. It might make me think I'm identical to Napoleon, but it wouldn't actually make me identical to Napoleon. So just remembering all the details of someone's past life, that's not enough to make you identical to them. What Locke seems to want is something um, that you might call autobiographical or episodic memory. I mean, if you remember, say, your fifth birthday party, or um, what it was like on your first day at Cal, then you remember that from the inside. Yeah, you, you have everything from the perspective you were in back then. Um, Locke defines a person as a thinking, intelligent being that has reason and reflection, and, and here's the key point, that can consider itself as itself the same thinking thing in different times and places. Um, so you can know someone else's biography as well as you can your own, but what you can do with yourself is know of your own past life and think of your own future life um, from the inside. Consider yourself as yourself. That's what people can do that say foxes or dogs can't. That's why we say foxes and dogs aren't people. Um, yep. Higher memory equals identity. Well, yeah, yeah. You learn how to that's right. And you focus your life on piano, then and if you suddenly forget that's a big problem. Or if you read that book in a point, it's something that in that book that you really took to change yourself for certain yes. reasons. Yes. I mean, if you lose yes. that, you lose a lot about yourself. You lose a lot about yourself, but the person hasn't died. Uh, right, that's the key thing. The person hasn't ceased to exist. Um, I, it's not the same person, though. It's a change. That's what you're saying. It's not the same 
Yeah, I, I, I was saying, OK, the view is at any rate, I don't want to be too dogmatic here, but the view is it's still the same person, even though something about them has been lost, if the, if the great pianist now can no longer play. OK, well, think, of, think of, for the reality check, think of it in terms of whose bank account is it, whose retirement money is it, whose family is it, whose passport is it? Is that all the same? You when the get your fifth birthday, it's still the same. Sorry? You get your fifth birthday, you're still going to have the same bank account. If you forget? Yes, that's right, that's right, that's right. Um, OK, that's a little bit confusing. Uh, if your bank account was laid down when you were five, all right, then, but yeah. Um, I agree there are difficult cases for the memory thing, but uh, for, for, for memory like when you just plumb forget something. But I do want to suggest a way of meeting them in a second. Yeah. Um, but uh, 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 I think if you, th I th let me just emphasize the reality check of thinking about things like whose passport is it, uh, you know, because you clearly don't take away the pianist's passport just because they've lost uh, the ability to play. You clearly don't take away their family just because they've lost the ability to play. You, you see what I mean? In that kind of mundane sense, it's, it just obviously is the same person. OK, the, we are not going to go away from this. We're going to spend two weeks in this. So, uh, and I agree that all these things are, are difficult. Yeah, I'm trying to, uh, as you were saying, I'm trying to um, channel lock here. Yeah, with that, it should be coming lock. Um, OK, <laughs> OK. OK, um, so the kind of um, uh, uh, memory he's thinking of is autobiographical or episodic memory. It's, not, it's always a bit puzzling to me um, when we're thinking about this memory of your past life, memory of your first day at Cal. Is it that you've got a kind of narrative as the unit of memory, the kind of story that you tell? Or is it your experience? Is it your ability to relive the past from the inside? I think what Locke's thinking of is, you could think of it as a kind of imagination, right? We talked about imagination a lot in this class already. But you can use imagination to have knowledge of someone else's mental life from the inside. You can put yourself into their shoes. You can see things from your own perspective. And the kind of memory that matters here that Locke's thinking of is, when you can project yourself into your own past self. Yeah? You can think about uh, things from um, your past point of view. You can remember how it was then for you. So to remember a past event, you've got to have some imaginative impression of the past event. If someone's saying to you, um, uh, imagine how it was in the past, uh, I mean, remember how it was in the past. What you've got to have is an imaginative impression of um, your perceptions back then. <laughs> I tell you what, I'm actually going to skip over uh, uh, and come back. I'll come back to another time. Um, just the detailed development of uh, um, uh, how you explain what memory is. Um, but I want to. Uh, I want to be sure today to talk a little bit about, you guys have raised a whole bunch of problems. I want to um, try and address some of these problems um, right now. So the view so far is, is this. I mean, it's reasonably clear what I'm talking about when I say memory. Remembering particular past incidents from the inside. Does that make sense? OK. Um, so the theory is. The later person is the same as the earlier person, if and only if the later person remembers doing and seeing what the earlier person did. So memory. Oh, was that too fast? Okay. Okay. So x. Okay, let me just read that out. <coughs> x at the later time t2 is the same person as y at the earlier time t1, if and only if uh, x at the later time t1 remembers in this sense of from the inside, getting the past person's point of view, doing what the earlier person did then. Is the second one supposed to be T2 and then T1? Yeah, I think ah. <laughs> yes. Um, possibly the one weak spot in the theory. OK. Um, OK. 
kit. Okay, is that better? No, thank you. Okay. Um, so here's a car crash. Um, um, the, the, a natural problem for this view is one that you guys have raised already is amnesia. Yeah, that yeah. If, someone, if someone gets a head injury in a car crash, uh, amnesia is not uncommon. Yeah? Um, you have the grieving family uh, around the bedside saying, don't you remember us, Bill? And um, Bill saying, who are these people? <laughs> right? I've never seen these people before in my life. Right? That's a very, uh, it's the most, uh, it, it certainly happens quite, uh, quite a lot. Um, there are many cases of this. Very upsetting for everyone. But in that kind of case, um, people never say, that's not Bill, right? You always take it for granted it's still the same person, even though they can't remember anything of their life before the car crash. Well, here's one way of thinking of what's going on here. It seems to me there are two kinds of amnesia. One is um, um, you, you, your memories have got a kind of filing system, so you can call up files from your past memory, your kind of tags to call up files from your past memory. Um, so what can happen is that uh, you've got all the memories, but you've just lost the tags, so you can't access those memories from your past life. Then usually in cases of head injury, um, amnesia, what is, people usually get better. People usually get their memories back. The memories were actually there the whole time. The memory traces were still there the whole time, but the person couldn't get them, and then later they get them. Yep. So one kind of amnesia is where you've got the memory traces, but you just can't access the memories, like you've got a filing system, but you just lost all the tags and all the folders, so you can never get any particular folder you want. But another kind of amnesia would be one where I don't know, you're visiting a physics lab somewhere on campus, and as you go through the lab, you go through a very powerful magnet. Your head gets subjected to a very strong magnetic field, and all the memories are actually permanently erased. Now, suppose that's what happens. Suppose it's that kind of amnesia. Um, it seems to me that if the family around the bedside thought, uh, found out that what happened had been that Bill's head had gone through a very powerful <laughs> magnet and there weren't even any traces there of all the old memories. It seems to me it would be a perfectly natural reaction to say, that thing there's not Bill, right? Bill's gone. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it might be ruthless, but it seems to me accurate, yeah? If the memories have really been permanently deleted, not just the usual kind of amnesia that I can't get it, then a lot can say that is destruction of the person. So we can put that by saying the later person, blast, I've done it again with that T1 and T2, but you, 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 you see what I mean, okay. Um, the later person is the same as the earlier person, if and only if, the later person remembers, or at any rate, has the memory traces in their brain, even if they can't get at them for the time being, of what the earlier person saw and did. Um, yeah. Um, if, like, yesterday, I like, had an itch on my arm and then I itched it, that's still like an autobiographical memory experience. Yes, absolutely. I yeah. probably like, don't remember all the times I've felt itchy. Or my, Very good. My yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. The, 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 it, can't be, it, it can't be right to demand memory of, memory of every individual event for you to be the person that was in that event. Yeah, that's your point. But if I sum up all the times of those experiences that have slipped from me, like, there's probably millions. Yeah. So how could we say that like, I've had one continuous stream of memory just because I can remember flagship moments like my first birthday party yes. or things like that. Like, those, yeah. those are just like some small parts of my entire life. Like there's so many little, like every millisecond is an experience. Okay, the, 
that is actually my next slide. <laughs> the, the way Locke addresses this kind of thing, or the, sorry, the way Lockeans Locke didn't really get into this, but the, the, the natural way to address this kind of thing is, suppose you take the itch and the scratch, yep, then a, a, a moment after you'd done it, you remembered it, yeah? Um, so what you've got to look at are not um, um, being able to reach from now directly to the past event. What you want is a chain of memories linking you to the past event. So um, a minute after you had done the scratch, let's suppose you still remember that. And then a minute later, you remember doing whatever you were doing at that other minute, if you see what I mean. Yeah. Um, and so on, minute by minute. So if you think of it not as directly reaching back, but minute by minute, your memory is connecting to the past self, then you can address that kind of question. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. How can we tell the memory is just, we can't trace it, or it is, it is totally destroyed? Uh, it is, how can you tell the difference between yeah, the memory having been? Just, for example, from a, from a man outsider, Yes. See, uh, no, he, he doesn't re recognize me any longer. Yes. So how can you tell he's just forgotten or it's just he can't trace it? Yeah, if, you, if it's whether the trace is there or not. Well, yeah. the, the reason, uh, first of all, there really is such a distinction, it seems to me. Yeah, because, yeah. 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 Um, and the way we tell in practice is people who have the traces usually manage to access them in the end. Okay. Yeah. Um, but I agree that there might be cases where you're really very unsure as to what's going on. And actually, with Alzheimer's, it very often seems to be like that. Um, you don't quite know what's been damaged. Yeah, yeah. So what if when Bill walks under the magnet, it erases all of his, like, completely erases all of his memories from the moment before he, like, opened the door before he walked under the magnet? So he still remembers opening the door, which is before he lost all of the memories. So then... The chain is yes. still there. Like there's still a link before he lost his memory. So the, the chain of I see. Yes, very good. Yeah, that would work. That, that, that he could hang on to himself in that way. Yes. So you could hang on to yourself through apparent amnesia that way. So the classical version of this was given by Thomas Reed. Um, the retired general remembers being a gallant officer. The officer remembers being a mischievous boy stealing apples. The general doesn't remember being a mischievous boy. Right, so that's, th th that is actually the same structure as um, that scratch thing, the, the itch and scratch thing, um, or this case. Uh, what you really want to say is, I get a chain going back. I, I, the, the retired general remembers doing what the gallant officer did, the gallant officer did, yeah, um, and so on. And as long as you get enough of that, that's the same person. Do you see what I mean? So what you want is not... Um, <coughs> <laughs> How far back? This one? <coughs> who's, who's speaking? I can't see who's speaking. Oh, right, right. Uh, OK. Yes? I'm having a hard time accepting all that because I feel like, for me, a person is a person through the reaction how I can expect when I give them a specific a person is a person from the reactions you can expect. Yeah, like the, the personality. Yeah. So I think if we have patterns, and those patterns are imprinted to our brain yeah. through experience, and those patterns don't change that much. Well, they, sometimes they don't, they and sometimes might. they do. But I, I think general patterns, like recognizing my family members, Is that right? I mean, the majority, it, the majority of those patterns are still the same. I still have the same person. And I will, I mean, if I change all of them, I have a different person. It's just obvious. If I change the pattern, what is my name? And if I change the pattern, where was I born? And like, if I change the pattern, am I a human being? So if I change all those. Yeah. Well, Hollywood is full of people who have different names. I mean, that, you, you see what I mean? That doesn't I make mean, them different them people. All, if, I, if I would ask all of them what name. Yes, that, that's memory, right? 
Um, you're asking something about their memory stretching back. Um, but just changing how you interact with people. Um, I mean, if you, yeah, if you think, if you could, to, to continue with Hollywood, as you take, um, well, I remember her before she was famous. Yeah, but the, the moment that movie came out, she was completely different. Uh, that happens. Yeah. Still the same person. Common sense. You, you talk. You, you talk. <laughs> we, we actually do. I'm sorry. I don't, <laughs> I don't, we, we will continue with this for the next couple of weeks. So I don't, but we have to stop now for today. Okay, thanks, guys. Great questions, great discussion.